Hi everyone, Donut here. Today we got a shooting breakdown, or maybe it's a shoot down breakdown. One of those things is breaking down. I'll tell you what's breaking down. Russian air defenses are breaking down. Supposedly, a Russian S-400 air defense system shot down an Su-34M bomber in a team kill, escape from Tarkov style. July 17th, Arkhangeva, Ark, Arkhangeva, Arkhangeva, Ar Words are hard. Let's get Ryan Macbeth in on this because his New Jersey accent makes mine sound like the King's speech. Thank you, Donut. So a couple of people asked me to break down this story about a shoot down of SU-34M in uh, the Alkesk region of Luhansk occupied Ukraine. The aircraft was traced back to the Russian Air Force's uh, 277th Bomber Aviation Regiment out of Kerba Air Base in the Far East. And this particular strike bomber is a highly capable modernized strike bomber that was just delivered to the Russian Air Force a couple of weeks ago. Now, the rumor going around is that Russia is so afraid of these new HIMARS rockets that were sent to Ukraine that they're just shooting down everything. And there's another rumor that says that Russia was trying to engage HIMARS rockets and accidentally engaged one of their own planes. I think that both of those scenarios are unlikely. I'm going to show you why by showing you what HIMARS looks like on a radar screen, by showing you what an SU-34 contact looks like on a radar screen, and then I'm going to show you some distances involved. Now, HIMARS stands for High Mobility Artillery Rocket System. It's basically a box on wheels that shoots rockets. It's the rockets that are special. These rockets can reach out about 70 kilometers, and they have GPS guidance and internal guidance. So even if you jam GPS, the rockets can still get to their target. The United States donated four of these launchers to Ukraine. They've been used to devastating effect by hitting Russian supply and logistics centers far behind Russian lines. So the Russians are scared of these things because they really don't have a way to counter this yet. Let's try to figure out what was going on with this aircraft first. Nobody is disputing that an aircraft was shot down. So a Russian telegram channel reported on the shoot down and they said the burning ball fell to the ground for more than a minute. So if this plane was falling for a minute, we can use terminal velocity to kind of figure out how high up it actually was when it got hit. So we just take the mass of the SU-34, we take the cross section of the SU-34, figure the drag coefficients one, this is gonna be some rough math here, and we get back 100 meters per second. That means that the aircraft was at least six kilometers in the air when it was hit, or about 20,000 feet. 20,000 feet seems a little low. I believe most planes start cruising at around 28,000 feet, but that 28,000, 20,000 gap is where we might have started terminal velocity. So it might have been higher when it was hit before it started falling. So what would an SU-34 look like on radar? Well, it looks something like this. Uh, here's track 99, which is the SU-34. You know, it's moving at a steady speed. It's moving at a steady altitude, maintaining that altitude. It's not doing anything evasive. It's not doing anything weird. It's just a plane that's moving from point A to point B. So it would look something like this. Now, a high Mars missile travels in an arch, like a low arch. It's not going to be a high arch like a theater ballistic missile. It's going to be a lower kind of arch. So I want you to watch the speed and altitude. The speed is staying the same, but the altitude is increasing rapidly. Like literally nothing else on the battlefield is going to look like this thing. And the altitude is going to keep increasing until it hits its apex, and then the speed might slow down a little bit and then it's gonna start falling. So as you can see, these two different tracks are two totally different kinds of flight profiles. And I'm sure you can see how an operator might confuse one for the other, but they definitely do have two different ways of flying and a computer can definitely segregate these two things. Now, even if the tracks do look similar, there's another element that every single modern army practices. It's called deconfliction and it's pretty darn hard but it's essential to any kind of modern air battle. So essentially you get anybody who has a piece of the puzzle in the same room, and this will be a joint operations center where you have the air force there, the ground forces are there, state security might be there as well. And they all talk to each other, hopefully. Now in a case like this, for deconfliction purposes, you would set up a safe corridor. That is, you would tell the ground forces, hey, the air force is gonna go down this corridor tonight between 2200 and 0100. So don't shoot at anything that's in this corridor between these two times. I would be very surprised if Russia wasn't planning joint operations and practicing deconfliction because if they weren't doing that, you'd see them shoot down a heck of a lot more of their own planes. Now here's another thing. Most military aircraft, and yes, this includes Russian aircraft, have a special transponder on it called IFF. This stands for Identify Friend or Foe. Before that surface-to-air missile battery takes a shot, it's going to interrogate that aircraft and say, hey, are you friendly or not? And it'll send that message up to the transponder, and the transponder will respond back, yes, 
or if it's not a friendly aircraft, it won't respond back at all. Now, this could also mean that it's a civilian aircraft, so you still have to make a decision, but at least you know you're not targeting a friendly aircraft, unless the IFF transponder isn't working. And sometimes that happens with deadly results. Back in 2004, during the war in Iraq, an American Patriot anti-aircraft unit destroyed an RAF tornado and they killed the crew because the crew's IFF transponder had stopped squawking friendly. So here's the other thing to think about. This particular city where the incident occurred is at least 50 some kilometers behind Russian lines. So that would mean the high Mars is gonna have to be about here if it was targeting that area. And that is really, really close to the front lines. I'm not sure the Ukrainians would move a high Mars system that close to Russian lines. Okay, let's say the Ukrainians really did move a missile system that close to the border. Well, those high Mars missiles are kind of right at the edge of their range. So by the time they're hitting Alkes, they're terminal, which means they're gonna be below 28,000 feet, 20,000 feet, whatever height that plane was at. So. Just that would kind of smell funny if you're an operator. So here's what I think happened. I think this particular SU-34 was in its safety corridor and somehow it deviated from its safety corridor. And Russian air defenses kind of got weird about this. And so they selected this thing and they hit IFF and nothing came back. It didn't come back as friendly or unfriendly. So now weapons are free. This thing is still coming at you. You select it, weapons free, and now you start launching missiles. Maybe the plane even tries to evade, but it's just too late. So my guess is that this is just a case of a bad transponder. The surface air missile system crew had to make a call. And in the immortal words of Carter Burke, I made a decision and it was wrong. It was a bad call, Ripley. It was a bad call. Bad call? These people are dead, Burkhoff. Well, they're actually not dead. Supposedly they were rescued, but this kind of shows you the pressure that surface-to-air missile operators are under. I've been writing the script for my video on how Patriot missiles work, and I've interviewed a significant number of 14 Echoes and 14 Alphas. These are the, uh, the enlisted and the uh, officer operator MOSs for the Patriot missile system. And these are some of the smartest soldiers I have ever met. They are literal rocket scientists. The amount of responsibility these young men and women have in America's air defense just blow my mind because they have to make decisions. They have to make these decisions quickly because things are moving at Mach 5 and whatever decision they make, people die. If they launch and they made the correct decision, people die. If they don't launch and they didn't make the correct decision, that missile that's incoming or that plane carrying bombs could blow up a chow hall of the people you're supposed to be defending, and those people die. Air defense is a hard job, and that's why only the best do it. But sometimes even the best make mistakes. Thank you for watching.